Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk about back spasm and what can you do about it. Back spasm is a very common condition that many people all around the world experience in some stage in their life. But in many cases, people only take rest or sometimes painkiller for recovery. Unfortunately, these two options are not going to be a long-term solution for you. And in this video, I'm going to share with you a couple of tips and exercises for you for your quicker recovery. If you've never been in this channel, my name is Bob, I'm a physical therapist, and the purpose of this channel is to help people like yourself with the simple tips and exercises for quicker recovery. Make sure to subscribe, like and share our channel with your friends and family. Let's get started. In this routine, guys, I've designed a very low impact exercises that if you're experiencing a acute or chronic back pain, you can still follow this routine. I've also added a very important tips at the end of this video that I would suggest you to follow them one by one. And for your optimum results, I would suggest to you and my patient to follow this routine daily at least once or twice a day. However, if you find two times a day is too much for you in terms of your time, minimum you should follow this routine once a day. Research has shown that staying active after experiencing back spasm can be beneficial for your quicker recovery. However, before you're starting your routine, you need to follow a series of protocols that we're going to share with you in this video. We call police and no harm protocol and I would suggest you to watch this video until the end and follow these two protocol before you're starting these exercises. In the acute phase, in the first 24 to 72 hours after a back spasm, it is crucial to ensure the best outcome for healing process. The main goal of this time frame is to control the amount of swelling to the injured area, prevent further injury and reduce pain. This principle will help you to reduce the amount of swelling, thereby it will fasten your recovery. As a general rule for management of most injuries, it is simple as remembering two simple acronyms, police and no harm. The police principle is a modern modified first aid method of treating musculoskeletal injury. We are going to show you with a couple of steps how to protect your acute injury. These steps are known as police protocol as we could divide them into protection, optimum load, ice, compression and elevation. This process should be applied within the first 24 to 72 hours immediately after an injury. The next protocol that you are going to follow alongside with police would be no harm, which is a stand for heat, alcohol, running or exercise, and massage. Heat, alcohol, and massage will cause blood vessel to dilate which in turn will increase the flow of the blood to the area. This process can be against the healing process. Avoiding running and exercise can be an opportunity for your body to promote healing process. Due to exercise and running, your blood flow can increase and your blood pressure can be increased around the area that is injured. And what study has shown, that can be against healing process. You can read more about these two protocols underneath of this video and understand what factor does affect the healing process in acute phase. All right, guys, the first two exercises that I'm going to show you guys is going to be basically flexion extension with breathing. This movement, it can be some, in some cases um, sore or uncomfortable when you actually experiencing back spasm. Now, in every single individual, this can be different, which means some people might have issue with uh, bending forward or flexion. And in many cases, if you um, bending backward, which means extension, it might be sore. Based on what you're experiencing, I'm gonna show you what can you do about it. If you're experiencing uh, bending forward, in the first 72 hours of your uh, basically um, um, spasm or injury, we don't want to kind of poke your back and create movements that bothers you, which means we try to do the opposite movement that feels comfortable. 
We don't want to aggravate your pain and symptoms. And for that purpose, I'm going to show you the extension movement, which is a seated position. What you're going to do, you're going to put your hands around your hip bone at the back and with breathing, create that extension movement. What we're trying to do, we're trying to be as relaxed as possible. You want to apply a bit of pressure on your hip bone and create that extension. Now, breathe out when you come down. Breathe in and breathe out. This is a similar movement to Mackenzie, which is a common technique that we use for disc bulges. What this movement does, it creates extension at the same time, it helps your body to actually relax. With the breathing, we're planning to actually let your body to relax and create some sort of movement. Remember this guys, movement is the key for back pain. If you stay stable and not doing anything, unfortunately your back is not going to get moving and, and feel comfortable. Now, we do the opposite movement. If you find extension is not really comfortable, what we're trying to do, we're trying to do the opposite movement, which means we're going to do flexion. Which means, what you're going to do, you can hold your hands next to your body, and from a neutral position, what we're trying to do, you're going to breathe in, and breathe out. You're going to go to the point that feels comfortable, then breathe in, and breathe out. You got to spend time As you can see, I'm not tensing anywhere. I'll try to just keep everywhere relaxed and chill. You don't want to tense anywhere. You want to basically create movement. We're going to practice this routine, guys, for three sets of, let's say, eight to 10 repetition. Watch which movement doesn't feel comfortable. Don't poke it. The next movement that I'm going to show you guys is going to be nerve glide. If you watch my video series in terms of uh, lower back and disc bulges, this is one of my favorite exercises that actually help you to neutralize your nervous system and helps you to get pain free. You can try this movement for both legs. I'm going to show you uh, in one side and if you find either side is more sore, some, some, some cases you might get uh, pain on the right or left, try to try in both sides but even in trying it one side it's actually beneficial. Now you're going to copy exactly the movement that I'm trying to do here as I show you here. What we're trying to do, we're trying to bring the foot up and create movement on the neck. My body is stable, I do the opposite now. I try to be relaxed as possible. Put up and neck back. Slow control down. If you find you would like to do this uh, basically on the ground, you can do it in a sideline. If you browse on my videos, you will see example of the sideline. As you can see, I don't force any movement. Slowly go up and control down. You can try it for both sides. Try it for three sets of 10 to 15 repetition. It shouldn't be sore when you're doing it. Try to go to the range that it feels comfortable and at the same time, breathe in and out. Don't hold your breath. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you two exercises in this routine that you're gonna do them on the ground and you can uh, give them a try. We're gonna start with glute bridges and move on to thoracic rotation. These two exercises can be done any, any place at home but it's very easy and it helps you to keep moving. I'm gonna start with glute bridges. Um, you're gonna lie down on your back, hands next to your body, feet shoulder apart. You're gonna make sure that you're breathing while you're doing this exercise and we're gonna go all the way up and slow control down. Now make sure to go to the point that you feel comfortable and slowly progress that. If you find this movement easy, you can hold it at the top for a second slow, and slowly progress. You're going to try this routine for three sets of 10 to 12 uh, and if you find it, it easy, you can progress it to 15. Now, I'm going to show you the thoracic rotation um, on the kneeling position and you can give it a try. In this position, your hands going to be underneath of your shoulder and your knee is going to be underneath of your hip. And what we're trying to do is to uh, create um, some sort of rotation um, in our thoracic. Your hand can be next to your neck. And slowly we're going to rotate all the way up. Control. Your body is stable and you create this movement. Make sure that you're breathing in and out. And slowly you can control. Now, what you could do, um, you can try this movement in both sides. 
can hold my arms even that way if you feel more comfortable you can use your arm this way go to the point that is you feel comfortable you can change arms slow control up all the way down breathe in and breathe out you can even hold it there if you find the position that it feels comfortable or try to try them in both sides in both exercises guys and um, uh, what I'm trying to show you is that you try to avoid holding your breath and also try to go to the point that you feel comfortable you're going to progress your routine guys to Mackenzie extension this exercise is very simple but at the same time if you find that it gives you, giving you relief it can be a really good choice of exercise I'm going to show you how to do it you can give it a try you might see in this exercise in my previous videos in this video I'm going to show you how to start it and how you can progress it you can start basically from this position which is like you're lying on your belly and focusing on your breathing now the first progress is to come on your elbows and literally breathe in there and breathe down now in many cases you might even stay in there and that can be your movement basically range which means from starting position to coming to your elbows and if you find this is comfortable this is easy it doesn't bother you you can slowly challenge yourself which means bring your arms next to your chest and slowly come up breathe in breathe out breathe in and breathe out now how far can you progress you can progress to the point that your hip still is on the ground but you are in uh, a kind of like hyper extension position come up stay there for a sec and slow down now if you like to progress it more you can engage your glutes with lifting your foot off the ground and squeeze the glutes and lift the hip off the ground slowly back down again you can practice this for let's say three sets of five don't rush it guys it's more about getting that comfort from this exercise rather than anything else now we're going to move on from here to cat camel which is a very simple and effective movement for your hip which is give you basically that hip basically um, tilt we want to go for basically anterior and posterior tilt you can hold there for a few seconds heads up make sure that you not holding it you relax stretch it good don't hold your breathing relax it there back up again now when you're doing this movement guys make sure that actually you feel not more tense you want to make it actually more relaxed and your breathing is very essential and in some cases I even ask my patient to do a partial one which means just move it and relax it just move it pelvic tilt and relax I hope you guys find this video helpful if you have any question make sure to leave me a comment and I get back to you if you need further help, we have an online consultation that if you visit our website that you can book your consultation with me no matter where you are in the world and I would be happy to help you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for our weekly update. Until next week, all the best.